data engineers at every big tech company use Apache Spark, and it has five levels to it. Level zero is, can you install Apache Spark with Spark Shell or PySpark? Because if you can't install it, you can't get started. Level one is you have to learn about the three different APIs. So you have RDDs, data frames, and data sets. You also need to learn about transformations, which is how Spark moves and transforms data. This is going to be map, filter, group by, and join. And then you have actions, which are going to be count, show, collect, and insert into. Actions are when Spark actually runs and does something. Then you have lazy execution. Lazy execution is how Spark will run transformations, but it won't actually run any transformations until an action is taken. And if you can master these three fundamentals, you will be well on your way to being good at Apache Spark. Next is you want to learn about how to optimize Spark queries. This is going to be level two. So a big thing that Spark has is the Catalyst Optimizer. The Catalyst Optimizer rewrites your queries so that they will run in a more efficient way. Make sure you understand about columnar storage and you only select the columns that you need in your pipeline because that will make your pipeline run a lot faster. And make sure you know the, the differences between Parquet, JSON, and CSV. That will be very, very powerful. Make sure you understand about shuffle. Shuffle happens on group by, order by, and sorting operations. And know that it's an expensive operation and, and try to reduce that by partitioning the right way. Uh, make sure you know about coalesce versus repartition. Repartition splits your data up and ma by managing more computers and coalesce brings the data back together. Uh, make sure you don't use UDFs unless you absolutely need to because UDFs ignore the catalyst optimizer that makes Spark run a lot faster. So then you have level three, which is where you master Spark performance tuning. This is where you need to learn about joins. This is broadcast join is amazing if one side of the data set is small, if you have a small and a big. Uh, you also need to learn about the broadcast join threshold, which starts at 10 megabytes, but you can tune it all the way up to a couple gigabytes. Make sure you understand about task parallelism. This is where you, you can tune up spark.sql.shuffle partitions that will allow your job to run more par parallelly. Then you also have, if there's skewed data, make sure you understand how adaptive execution works. Keeping in mind, adaptive execution only runs in Spark 3 or later. And last but definitely not least is make sure you understand explain plans in Spark, because if you can look at explain plans, you can see the different types of joins, whether that be broadcast join, shuffle merge join, shuffle hash join, nested inner loop join. There's all these different types of joins that Spark might be doing underneath the hood. And the explain plan will help you troubleshoot any optimization things that you might need to do. And level four is where you actually are managing the cluster. So in the cluster level, you need to learn about like what's the difference between Yarn, Kubernetes, standalone, EMR, Databricks, serverless. There's so many different ways that Spark can be running. So make sure you understand that. Make sure you understand dynamic allocation. That's a, how Spark is given just the right number of executors to run. And make sure you know about RDDs versus data frames. Spoiler, you should almost always be using data frames. Make sure to comment Spark below for my Spark interview.